is at least one inch in length. As you see, this front door has a very large black porch. One option to consider in reference to securing this and making this more challenging for bad guys to get in is shatterproof material over this glass porch. So, we provided you with some helpful hints. If you'd like a more comprehensive residential security survey, please feel free to contact 407-246-2369. Also, consider starting and maintaining an active neighborhood watch group. I'm thrilled, thrilled that, that we're able, able to celebrate this, this grand opening of you know, every type of amenity, sports, sports entertainment, museums, nightlife options, main streets, great restaurants, uh, this is about everything that you can have. And, and having, having great, great hotels, hotels downtown, downtown is equally important to all of the other things that we have. We're extremely pleased to have a high quality Marriott back in all of the options in our downtown area. Transportation. 
its proven track record of relieving symptoms such as sitting in traffic and road rage leaves me feeling relaxed and ready for the workday. And with Huey Avenue being closed for a full 18 months, it's important that you also consider alternative transportation. It worked for me. Maybe it'll work for you too. Alternative transportation. Proven fast, fast relief, relief from, from traffic, traffic jams, road closures, closures and, and road rage. rage. Not, Not taking alternative transportation could produce side effects, effects that, that include drowsiness, extreme irritability, increased sweating, bouts of rage, headaches, for speech, dress, nausea, Ask your doctor if alternative transportation is right for you. Chances are, the answer is yes. Good afternoon and welcome to the April 16th meeting of the Orlando City Council. We're going to begin today's proceedings with the invocation today offered by Clayton Lewis Ferreira, who is a naturalist, a teacher, a writer, a biologist, and the first American to be named a Darwin Scholar by the Field Studies Council of London for his achievements as a young naturalist under the age of 30. Mr. Ferrara was named a young alum of significant distinction by Rollins College, was voted into the Emerging Leaders Council of the National Wildlife Federation, and is a board member of the New Leaders Council in Orlando and an adjunct professor of the K-12 Ampersand School. He's a founding member, executive director, and chief executive officer of Ideas for Us, a non-for-profit United Nations accredited charity organization that works in over 20 countries. Since 2008, Ideas has helped people create innovative solutions and fund local action to advance sustainability. Ideas for us focuses on five key areas, energy, water, food, waste, and ecology. The global headquarters is in downtown Orlando in the plaza after the invocation. will be led in the pledge by Commissioner Hill. You may stand or remain seated. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Commissioner. Earth Day is a time every year where we can certainly be thankful for our wonderful planet and all of the things that it gives us, but it's also a time to be inspired by something that started as one movement that then now has spread around the entire world. So many countries celebrate Earth Day and they're an inspiration to people and motivate them to take action and to protect the planet. Being part of life is something that unifies all of us. It makes us together in this planet in solidarity, and we have to do everything that we can to protect it. So this Earth Day, I ask you all to not only be thankful for the Earth, but to be inspired about the amazing things that everyday citizens can do to protect our environment, especially here in the City Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, let's call the meeting to order. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll and make a termination of quorum, please? Commissioner Gray? Here. Commissioner Ortiz? Here. Commissioner Stewart? Here. Commissioner Sheehan? Here. Commissioner Hill? Here. Commissioner Ings? Here. Mayor Dyer? Here. Mayor, you have a quorum with all members present. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, first order of business is consideration of minutes from the General Review and City Council meetings of March the 19th. Motion by Commissioner Ortiz, second by Commissioner Sheehan. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And so the motion carries. All right. Uh, I'm going to go right into the um, council update. And today is a very, very special day for a lot of us. This afternoon we have a very distinguished uh, guest to honor. Actually, I shouldn't call him a guest. We have uh, a very distinguished individual to recognize and honor for 40 years of service for our community. 
and Reagan Vandergriff is a man of faith, and many of you have uh, seen him here and all over the community. He's an Orlando Fire Department chaplain, chaplain of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Um, he has 40 years. Randall James, who is a former chief of staff to which mayors? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> said he walked in with Reagan 40 years ago to, uh, well, not this very chamber, but the chamber that preceded this city hall. And the chief is gonna come and make a presentation, Randall. Why don't you come stand up with the chief, would you? Hey, Reagan. Good afternoon, Mayor, Council. Uh, before I get started, I just wanna thank Reagan um, for his 40 years of dedicated service uh, his spiritual counseling and guidance for me as a chief, and I want to say the previous 10 chiefs or more. Uh, Reagan has been a, a cornerstone of our organization, keeping us all spiritually covered, as well as the retirees. So uh, he's been here through the tough times and good times, and uh, I cannot thank him enough for his leadership, his spiritual leadership, and his guidance as he prayed for me this morning. So he's always given a um, great prayer. So I just want to thank you for your 40 years as a result have a proclamation from the city of Orlando, so thank you. <clears throat> Whereas Dr. Reagan Vandegrift was born in Atlanta, Georgia in 1943, where he later met his mar and married his beautiful wife, Pat. They have two sons, Van and Adam, and whereas on February 15, 1978, Reagan accepted a call from the First Baptist Church of Orlando to become the minister of music in that role, he directed congregations, choirs, and worship, mission trips, concerts, conventions throughout the United States and around the world. And whereas on April 17, 1978, he was appointed by Mayor Carl T. Langford as the first official chaplain for the Orlando Fire Department. Since that appointment, he also went on to serve as chaplain for Reedy Creek Fire Department, Goa, multiple fire departments within the county, and in addition, he serves as chaplain for the Orange County Sheriff's Office and Fire Rescue. And whereas since 1999, Reagan has served as a minister of pastoral ministry for the First Baptist Church, where he has counseled, performed weddings, presided over funerals, made countless hospital visits, and provided pastoral ministry to those 55 years and older, including directing the senior choir and providing music for Sunday evening services. And whereas, with the Orlando Fire Department, Reagan has served as spiritual counselor, advisor for the fire department, leadership, and personnel. He has ministered in countless department personnel, their families during times of tragedy and times of joy. Reagan's compassion and voice of comfort and words of reassurance have made a significant impact on the Orlando Fire Department. And whereas Reagan is celebrating 40 years of service to the Orlando Fire Department, but his impact on the department and the city of Orlando would not be forgotten. Now. Now, therefore, I, Buddy Dyer, Mayor of the City of Orlando, hereby do <laughs> proclaim April 16th as Reagan Vandergriff Day in the City of Orlando. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Mayor, he said I could say a word. I'll make it very brief because I know you guys have got a you busy You take as thing. much time as you want. No. After 40 years, you deserve it. <laughs> well, I hope, I hope I might be around here for 45. I don't know, but you know how that goes. Uh, I thank you all so much. This means more to me than you'll ever know, but the joy of serving uh, is always a blessing. Uh, the Bible tells us more blessed to give than it is to receive. And um, through the years that we've been able to give uh, through the city and in all of our areas around here, it's been a, been a joy. Some things have been very difficult, but a lot of things have been a real blessing. And uh, this is sort of a capstone that means more to me than you folks will ever know. And I thank you for taking time out of a busy schedule. I know it's hard for you all to do these kinds of things anymore, but <laughs> I told some of the guys I think I was probably doing this before they were ever born. So anyway. <laughs> Y'all have done well. You've done well. And I thank you so much, Mayor. God bless you all. And I not only pray for the chief this morning, I prayed for all of you, which we do every day as well. Randall so just remember you're prayed for. To, but why don't you introduce your beautiful wife? Yeah, sure. This is my, oh yeah. Come here, Pat. <laughs> <Come> here. <laughs> yeah. We, we, 
besides the Lord, it would be impossible to have done anything I've ever done without this sweet lady right here. Uh, we've been married 49 years last February. She's agreed to go one more year with me, so we're going to try to make it 50. <laughs> then everything's on the table after that, I think. <laughs> but no, she's a wonderful lady, great mother and a grandmother, and uh, a true source of inspiration to me with our prayers and thoughts and all of the things. And so we love you guys, appreciate you. We've seen, I was just looking today, it was um, Commissioner um, Keith, I think Keith and Crenshaw were the two that worked with um, with Mayor Langford in making the presentation. Of course, the, the whole council approved it, but when they did it, it would be uh, actually 40 years ago tomorrow. It was the 17th of, uh, wow. of um, what that. is this, April? Yeah, and so that was 17th of April. And I've been very grateful and humbled to be a part of the city family, and you all have welcomed me and given me opportunities to do things beyond what I would have ever imagined. So God bless you, and hope we can continue to do that on for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, uh, let me say one other thing, if I may. Randall James down here, who we mentioned a while ago, was a very instrumental part in putting all this together as well. So I love Randall and Irma and the city family. I said it's hardly ever a time I come into City Hall that somebody doesn't say, how's Randall doing? So he is well remembered, and uh, we appreciate him and love him for all that he's done as well. Thank you, sir. Randall, why don't you give us a couple words of wisdom? I know you're always ready for oh that. <laughs> we don't have enough time. <laughs> You're not in a hurry to get this meeting over with, are you? <laughs> I'll be real brief. I will tell you that uh, I introduced uh, Dr. Vandergrift to Mayor Langford and asked if we would uh, set up a position of chaplain for the Orlando Fire Department. And so the mayor said, Dr. Vandergrift, what do you need? And Reagan said, uh, maybe a fire hat, maybe an ax. <laughs> and so the mayor said, you got it. After the meeting was over, I, took, I said, Reagan, you should have asked for a car. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for honoring Reagan today. All right. Okay, I've got just a couple other things. Um, last week, we hosted our first Civil Rights Award Ceremony and Banquet. Uh, it commemorated the untimely passing of Martin Luther King, Jr., who was assassinated 50 years ago. Uh, this month and also celebrated the 50th anniversary of the passage of the Fair Housing Act. Justice James Perry was recognized as the City of Orlando Civil Rights Award winner. He, he was the first African American appointed to the 18th Judicial Circuit. Um, our invocator mentioned Earth Day coming up, which is April 22nd. We'll be celebrating our sustainability efforts all week, but on Friday, We'll have an Earth Day Work Day event from 11 to 1 outside, so I'd invite everybody to join us. And a couple items on the agenda. The Orlando Tech Pilot Project was mentioned already, but it's uh, part of our economic development strategy, and we'll be putting money together to uh, do a matching grant program to support tech-focused activities. That's item C20. And then um, this is a really exciting one to me. We've been talking about affordable housing and sustainability. So we are bringing quality, safe, affordable housing. Um, and one of our great partners, Bishop Wiggins, uh, from the Hope Church, is uh, creating the Village of Orlando, renovating 58 formerly blighted apartments into a vibrant community that will focus on housing veterans with children and low-income individuals, and it also has some great sustainability features that we're gonna help them out with on today's council agenda. And before I turn it over to council for remarks, do we have any student, students in the audience today? If we do, would you please stand? Everybody stand. Everybody, Valencia? Valencia? All right. All right. Thank you for being here. Okay, we're gonna move on to the consent agenda, and the consent agenda is a number of items that are acted upon through a single vote of council. We give uh, each of our council members an opportunity to comment on items on the consent agenda as well as update you on important happenings from their district. We rotate the order that we do that, and today, Commissioner Hill is first up. Thank you, Mayor. 
Good afternoon. On Thursday, March 8th, I, along with Mayor Buddy Dyer, attended our Valencia a construction class graduation in the Paramore uh, area with the partnership of UCF and Valencia. Uh, we started out with 31 students, 30 graduated. And uh, I don't know about you, Mayor, but you could just see the pride uh, there in that room with the family members and the students. Out of those 30 that graduated, uh, 14 already have a job there in the construction industry and helping to build the UCF Valencia campus. And by the success of the program, we have started a second session that started in April. On March 15th, I, along with Marcia Goodman and Brenda March, was honored by Onyx Magazine as a woman on the move due to our work here in the city of Orlando alongside uh, other women throughout the state of Florida. March 19th through the 24th, I accompanied 32 students from our Parks and Recreation Division along with Commissioner Ortiz. Uh, we toured uh, college campuses there, but most of all we did mission work and where we went to some of the rural areas that are still without utilities and water and delivered uh, household items, uh, cleaning items, water, foods, uh, to some of the sick and shut in there. We delivered medical supplies and wheelchairs and uh, I'm going to leave uh, some of it for Commissioner Ortiz to talk about. It was a, a spiritual journey uh, for myself and many of the youth and uh, I think their lives was transformed as well as the residents there in Puerto Rico. Many of the students that we took had not even uh, left Orange County. Some, the state of Florida, some haven't, uh, hadn't flown on planes. Uh, and some stay in some tough areas here in Orlando. But when they went to Puerto Rico to be able to assist those in need, it made them know that even if they think it, they have it tough, that there's people in different parts of the country and in the world that has it even tougher. And uh, the kids were able to uh, go up into the mountains. I can tell you that was uh, something that I had never done. I had never gone 2,000 feet up in the air and look over a cliff in uh, my life been transformed, I got to get closer to Jesus. <laughs> uh, then on our return, uh, on March 24th, I along with uh, uh, Bridget Williams Byron Brooks' uh, sister, um, did something there. We were on a panel called The Breakfast with Kings and Queens, hosted by Man Up, that's in District 6. Uh, Commissioner Ings District, where it's an amazing, amazing nonprofit there that's transforming um, uh, lives there in, in the youth uh, in the west side of Orlando. Uh, they had a town meeting, and I can, I've been on multiple panels my four years, but the questions those kids asked were tougher than any that had been ever presented to me at any town hall. And it just shows, I think, earlier when we spoke about uh, the legislative session in Tallahassee, that our youth today are concerned about their future. And they want uh, their politicians and community leaders to be accountable. And uh, they are, uh, I think, the leading this, this community. Along with that, I was, I was joined by Commissioner Stewart and the mayor on April the 4th uh, to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. where I partnered with the AACCC and they uh, talked about the fight for justice and equality. Uh, it was well attended. Uh, on April the 9th, Mayor Dyer, Commissioner Sheehan, Commissioner Stewart and myself went over to the Florida Film Festival 
uh, and uh, seeing the viewing of a long time coming about the first interracial baseball uh, game played here in the Southeast region uh, by the Orlando Kiwanis uh, uh, Youth League and the Pensacola JCs. It was a, a wonderful documentary and that following morning on April 10th, we honored them over at Tinkerfield. I just have to uh, commend Mr. Ted Haddock and the Haddock Foundation. Special thanks to Commissioner Stewart by helping bringing uh, this vision uh, to pass. It was very spiritual when we saw these white little league, now more mature men come to center field there at Tinker Field in love. In 1955, it was a divided nation where blacks couldn't mix with whites and whites couldn't mix with blacks. And it showed me that even in 1955, that Orlando was a city of love. It was a city of inclusion um, and unity. Because this group of young boys here in Orlando said that they were going to against, go against the norm uh, here in the nation where baseball couldn't be played by an interracial uh, uh, group. And what happened that day in 1955, I do believe that the seeds of love was planted there in District 5 uh, Baseball Park there in Lake Lana Dune. And here, fast forward, Almost how many years? 60, 60, 60 years. 60 63. years. Mm -hmm. We saw the product of love. And uh, I'm just proud to be a, a, a resident of Orlando. I know we still have a lot of work to do, and there's still some obstacles. But uh, in many things, as we see Orlando being a progressive city and a city that leads, it didn't just start, it started back in 1955. And um, I just uh, uh, really appreciate uh, those men now, but boys then, that decided they wasn't gonna listen to mama, daddy, that they were gonna play the game of baseball and show that love uh, leads. So with that, Mayor, uh, I'll complete it. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Ains. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to say that on Thursday, March 22nd, I hosted and attended the FABOM, which is the Florida Association of Black Owned Media meeting, and it was held at Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church on uh, Prince Hall Boulevard. Um, the Florida Association of Black Owned Media is an organization comprised of black newspaper, magazine publishers throughout the state of Florida. And there are 13 member publications throughout the, <clears throat> throughout the state. And they, and they cover the entire state and also nationally too. <clears throat> the meeting um, <clears throat> went very well and the lunch was catered by Ole's Kitchen, which is Carl Brown. And thank you, Carl, for your <coughs> help and assistance uh, with many things that you do in the community. And then also on Saturday, March 24th, <clears throat> excuse me, I held my annual District 6 Easter Egg, Easter Excellent uh, Celebration and Egg Hunt at the Dr. James R. Smith Center on Bruton Boulevard. There were about 150 children that participated in this event. Uh, the children received Easter baskets, uh, filled with candy, colored eggs, an egg hunt took place, and actually prior to the egg hunt, they went and spoke with Orlando's new uh, city poet laureate, Susan Lilly. Uh, she held a workshop for all age categories that were in the egg hunt program. So thank you, Susan Lilly, and she's stepping right out, Mayor, and doing some uh, innovative and interesting things as a poet laureate for the city of Orlando. And then on Saturday, March the 31st, I attended and um, helped sponsor 
the He Paid It All production, and this is with standing ovation, Terry Burns. She's the CEO. And this was held at the Dr. Phillips Center for the Performing Arts at the Alexis and Jim Pugh Theater. This was the first time uh, this type of uh, production was put on by a black organization. So uh, kudos and congratulations to Terry Burns on a very well uh, presented production. And then Saturday, April 7th, I attended the He Got Up 2018 event. And this was held at Dr. James R. Smith Center on Bruton Boulevard. Pastor Tim Johnson and the organization decided to hold several different places. Last year, he got up, was all at Camping World Stadium, but this time they took it to, to uh, several different communities. And in the, uh, at the Smith Center, it was very well attended. Uh, lots of resources for the people. And uh, the main focus was helping people with legal issues. And also sessions were uh, given concerning suspended license, court costs, one-on-one -on -one legal consultations, and Know Your Rights seminars. And many of the vendors had other programs that they presented to the people to uh, help empower them. And then on Thursday, April the 12th, I attended the Central Florida Urban Education Leadership Summit that was sponsored by the College of Education and Human Performance at uh, the University of Central Florida, UCF, and uh, Mayor Dyer was also in attendance there. Uh, many of the topics concerned and highlighted the programs and things that were done in the Paramore Kids Zone, zone and Lisa Early was also on hand to uh, be a part of that. And then um, the mayor talked about the Civil Rights Awards ceremony and banquet. I, I attended that and um, there was a recognition by um, Gwendolyn Wiggins of um, posthumously of the honoree Albert L. Nelson. Al Nelson was the first human relations official, and he was appointed by Mayor Carl Langford, Langford in 1973. As the mayor mentioned, the winner of the City of Orlando Civil Rights Award was the Honorable, Jane, Honorable Justice retired Florida Supreme Court Justice James E. C. Perry, um, and Cran Raleigh was a runner-up for this particular award. And then I also attended on Friday, and before I, yeah, I attended on Friday the 2018 Fair Housing Training that was held at the uh, Doubletree by Hilton in downtown Orlando. And this was also hosted by Orlando Human Relations Department. And I want to thank Gwen Wiggins and her staff for all that they did to make this happen, uh, as well as Marcia uh, Goodwin. Uh, so this was a great event and a great turnout. And many of our local businesses, when we talk about fair house, housing, uh, we talk about cases of discrimination where blacks and other minorities are being redlined and kept out of housing stock. And so there were um, housing uh, managers and property owners that were in, in attendance to this uh, event as well. And I uh, complimented them for their attendance because it showed that they care and that they wanted to do the, the right thing. And of course, coming up is the Legends Academy fundraiser event that will be held at the Camping World Stadium, uh, Suite 8. Dr. Jennifer Porter-Smith is the director, and we're looking for any and everybody that wants to come and support Legends Academy and Knapford uh, Community uh, Charter School you're welcome to come and be involved. And that's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll move to District 1, Commissioner Gray. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Chaplain, congratulations, sir. Thank you for your service. And uh, also, I'd like to uh, mention uh, this Friday, Earth Day, we uh, are having happy hour in District 1, Southport Park. We have about 200 corporate volunteers that are going to show up to uh, work at Southport Park, which is just west of the airport. So uh, if you have nothing to do Friday night from 5 to 8, come and join us. Um, on the agenda, I want to declare a conflict 
uh, mentioned earlier in agenda review, item C3, one of the items there uh, in the Municipal Planning Board, um, item 2018-10003, I have a conflict um, with a business partner not involved in this particular deal, but I'm involved in other transaction with that sponsor. So I will be abstaining from that particular item, and I filed that with the clerk. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll move to District 2. Commissioner Ortiz. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the character of human beings is put to a test when facing devastation as a tragedy uh, left by the hurricane uh, last year, like Irma, Maria, and whatnot, and here in Florida, uh, Texas, and uh, Puerto Rico, and other islands. Um, here, I think we did a great job recovering. Our community came together. But there were peoples that weren't that fortunate, and Puerto Rico was one of those. And I want to commend a young lady who initiated this particular mission to Puerto Rico, which it was a three-pronged mission. It was a humanitarian, cultural, and academic mission. Uh, mission. That was Alex Temis, which is the uh, manager at the uh, Englewood Community Center. Um, they fundraised, and they obtained enough money to bring 32 kids to Puerto Rico. Commissioner Hale. Uh, was graciously enough to accompany us, and uh, we had a great, great experience. And as she described earlier, we face good things about Puerto Rico, because I said it was a three-pronged mission. It was, there was a, an a, uh, academic aspect, a cultural aspect, and those were fine. But when it came down to facing the reality of what had transpired in Puerto Rico, it was tough. Seeing um, cities that are yet to recover today, uh, no electricity, no water, and seeing families devastated with no food, no, um, we uh, brought some um, wheelchairs, we went to schools to bring supplies, and although the, the hurricane did a lot of damage, it didn't touch the spirit of the pe people in Puerto Rico. And we were blessed with that opportunity. And, um, but I have to say something else. I have never seen a group of people, especially young adults, like the students we took over there, behave, act as professional as those guys did. And our team in the city of Orlando, they're second to none to any, anybody in any level of government or any professional group. These guys acted with such professionalism, such order, the way they, everything was structured to the teeth, I mean, uh, the times, everything, it, it was, uh, like music, everything fell in place. And it was such a, a great taste and a great show of what the city of Orlando is all about when you go to other country and those con the, the, um, Puerto Rico, the island of Puerto Rico was very grateful about it. And they were very impressed by our students, by our staff, by our professionals. And um, that, that give you a sense of, a great sense of pride because I usually talk about the city of Orlando being the epicenter of the world and uh, when it comes to government and our people, but taking that principle to another place to show them what else we can do. It's not just about the city of Orlando, but it's about the world. It's, it's for all of us to be very proud. And I want to commend the team from Family Parks and Recreation, Alex Temes. Commissioner, thank you for everything you did. And, and those 32 young adults, our staff and those 32 young adults. And I'll take advantage of this opportunity because the Senate and the House of Representatives of Puerto Rico gave us uh, a uh, congratulatory uh, motions. And I'm going to read the one from the Senate, if you don't mind, Commissioner Hill. I know that you were given the one from the House. And it says, I, Manuel A. Torres Nieves, Secretary of the State of Puerto Rico, hereby certify that. In its session held on March 19th of this year, the Senate of Puerto Rico approved Motion 0214, introduced by the Honorable Thomas Rivera Chats, and that the same reads as follows. Congratulatory motion for the Senate of Puerto Rico acknowledgement and gratitude to the City of Orlando for their assistance in Puerto Rico recovery efforts after the devastation left in the, in the island by Hurricanes Irma and Maria. Last September 2017, Puerto Rico suffered the impact of two Category 5 hurricanes, Irma and Maria, which left the entire island without essential services like energy, water, and telecommunications, and shortage in basic supplies like food, construction materials, among others. Since then, local, state, and federal government have joined efforts to facilitate a speedy recovery. 
Due to the magnitude of the devastation, many public and private entities from the jurisdiction of our nation have come to the, uh, to the island to assist in those efforts, and the City of Orlando is one of them. City of Orlando, its residents and public officials have showed empathy and commitment to help this recovery, and for that, the, re the residents of Puerto Rico, as well as the Senate of Puerto Rico, are grateful. In witness thereof, we sign and seal this present, this present in San Juan, Puerto Rico, uh, on this 19th day of March, 2018. Uh, Thomas Rivera Schatz, President of the Senate, and Manuel Torres, Secretary of the State. Each one of the students were given one of this, and I thought it was great. So, Mayor, I'm going to give this to you. This is for you. Um, Commissioner, here with you, May. As well. That's the one. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Not the interrupt, Commissioner Ortiz. I must say that the uh, Speaker of the Senate is a HBCU grad from. Uh, Bethune Cookman yeah. College, and yes, he is. is a Valencia grad. <laughs> All right, Mayor. Um, continuing along, join me in congratulating Dover Shores Elementary School for receiving the Lifesaver Award for their fundraiser to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. The school collected close to $4,000 in donations. This money will help fund research on both blood disease as well as helping local patients. Special thanks to Principal Hart, school teachers, students, and staff for making this possible, and kudos to Ms. Milton's fourth grade class for collecting over $1,000 for this cost. Englewood Elementary Honors Program Ceremony was a total success. Parents and teachers gathered to celebrate motivation and hard work students put into classes this semester. The 15th students were recognized to the National Elementary Honor Society for going above and beyond in their classes, and to thank Principal Reyes for pushing to his students to be the very best. Park of the Americas is gearing up for another change. The upcoming weeks, LED lights will be installed, allowing for extra security and later closing times. And finally, kudos to the Florida League of Cities President Gil Ziffer and the Florida League of Cities team, as well as our very own Kathy Russell and our lobbying team for their very successful effort in advocating and advocacy stopping a whole stack of legislations aimed to preempt local municipalities. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll move to District 3. Commissioner Stewart. Thank you, Mayor. Let me uh, share a couple of things. First, uh, Reagan, Pat, thank you for your service. Um, uh, I didn't think you would think 40 years ago we would be sitting here 40 years later. But you have had an incredible impact on thousands of people. I don't know how much I appreciate that. So, yeah, well. I'm not going to give him much credit. He's my brother. <laughs> but um, we've been friends for a long time, and I appreciate your service. Um, every now and then, we get a chance to do some really neat stuff inside the city of Orlando that when you look back after your career, uh, you want to uh, remember fondly. Um, I had the opportunity to work uh, with uh, the uh, Ted Haddock and the Haddock Family Foundation uh, about the film A Long Time coming. We had a chance, um, uh, Commissioner Hill shared a little bit of that about with th that with you. Um, and in a short, in a nutshell, in 1955, in, when the world was not um, ready for integrated baseball games, um, the first baseball game between a black and a white team in Little League history occurred here in Little Old Lake Orndon. It was cool. Um, it's an opportunity during that same year, um, there are many around the country who did, chose not to play. Uh, and so we had a chance to celebrate that. I learned that story, shared it with this council several years ago. Uh, Ted Haddock picked up the ball and moved forward down that path, and we had a chance to celebrate that with the two teams this past week. Um, it's one of those few things when you look back over a chance to celebrate that. It's just really wonderful. Mayor, thank you for your personal support. Um, Commissioner Hill, thank you for that. Uh, Commissioner Sheehan, I know that she was moved by the, by the movie as well. Um, and uh, we hope to get a chance to show that later on. I don't know what the distribution will be, but eventually I want to share that with as many people as possible to talk about how wonderful our city is, uh, and we had a chance to discuss that. So it's really been neat. Um, I have a couple of ties to it. One is uh, I have only have 50 years of uh, experience in Little League Baseball, so I, have a, uh, I, I like that um, uh, legacy. And then at the same time, um, uh, my dad was president at that game. Uh, and then it turns out that when you end up having to look at all the guys that were there, I shared the other day, um, 
uh, uh, one of the guys who was on the team looked so familiar to me, and I went up to him later and I said, I, don't I know you from somewhere? And he said, well, yes, as a matter of fact, I was your ninth grade basketball coach. I went, you're a coach Lane. I had no idea. And here we had, had this, I had, really hadn't seen him since I was in ninth grade, which goes back many decades ago. Uh, uh, but it shows that uh, there is a wonderful impact on these, uh, both these teams, black and white, and their commitment to serve, I think, was important there. So I was very, very pleased to be part of that in a little bit of way. The second thing, as I'm thrilled to be part of, was this past Saturday. Um, uh, the Navy League of Central Florida decided they were going to celebrate uh, more than or almost 200,000 women who were trained at the Naval Training Center, uh, celebrating uh, the first time they had co-ed training in the Navy. Um, had a chance to represent the city there, represent the mayor, uh, and to share uh, some, some comments to thank them for the work that they've done. So, um, Mayor, today is your day to get presentation. So, uh, this is a replica um, of a six foot seven inch tall statue um, of a, uh, a female um, squad command leader um, representing the, those squads that came through. Uh, companies, you say, that came through. Um, and they presented this to you, Mayor. I had a chance to accept it on your behalf. Um, and um, we have uh, accepted that into our um, inventory uh, of uh, art. Uh, and it's on display uh, on a deck in the middle of Blue Jacket Park over in Baldwin Park. If you get a chance to go over there, it will be a, it's a wonderful asset to our community and reminds us how important uh, those women were, not to our only community, but also to our nation's history. And I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be part of that. So thank you very much, Mayor. Special thanks to Andy Moeller, who was the chair of the Memorial Committee, and to Townie Townsend, uh, who was the uh, Navy League um, Board of Directors uh, president, and of course to uh, Bill uh, Roto-Rooter, who was, uh, uh, was a past president and kind of got this ball rolling many years ago. So uh, appreciate the cooperation with our staff with them as well. A um, couple other quick things. Let me kind of say thank you to um, uh, our legislative staff. I appreciate the work that they did on the legislative update today. Um, uh, if you get a chance to listen, go back and listen to uh, what, what, what happened at the legislature from our city's perspective and how important that was for us to continue to uh, maintain our autonomy in terms of what our citizens want. Um, that's an important part. Uh, we call it pre preemption, but we call it local rule, local home rules, what we like. A couple of quick announcements. Um, Thursday night is the Taste of College Park, uh, sponsored by College Park Rotary Club over at Dubstred Ballroom. Um, on April 22nd, the sixth annual K-9 Memorial uh, over at Harbor Park uh, in Baldwin Park. This is a really moving event for those who have close ties uh, to uh, their dogs. Uh, it's a chance for us to, to commemorate their lives and their impact on us. It starts uh, at 630 and then there'll be a kind of a, a, a um, kind of a candlelight remembrance of your pet. If you'd like to participate, please come at 630. Ivanhoe Village is having a business networking event on April 23rd, uh, and then the College Park Main Street uh, is having their Dancing the Drive on April 28th. Those are all on my website as well as on the city's website for that standpoint. Uh, and may I may also want to follow along with uh, those spoke earlier about the Orlando Tech uh, Support Pilot Program. I think that's a good opportunity for us to uh, uh, reach beyond our normal walls uh, and to really uh, begin a process that will um, send to the community and to the world uh, that we're ready to be, take on that leadership in technology. And I appreciate your leadership in accomplishing that. And uh, well, that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you very much. All right. And finally, District 4, Commissioner Sheehan. Well, thank you, Mayor. Um, on, the, on the agenda today, um, on item A2, there is a city council date change from May 7th to May 1st. And unfortunately, because of that, I will not be able to be here because Dr. Ann McGee was gracious enough to nominate me for an alumni award from the American Association of Community Colleges. And I think it's only night that I be there to accept the award that she so graciously nominated me for. So I will be in Dallas, Texas that day. So I will not be here. But I figure in 18 years, I've only missed three city council meetings. So I think that's pretty good. <laughs> so I will not be here. Um, on item C3, Municipal Planning Board minutes, I'd like to read into the record some concerns that I had. On today's consent agenda, there is an item on the appearance review board minutes on council agenda item C4. 
Case number ARB 2017-10026 for the Fountain View 5 view that I'm requesting that the item be deferred until the Appearance Review Board finalizes the revisions of the elevations for this project. This particular site is adjacent to an historic district between residential and office areas. The overall details of the building look too commercial in nature and the project needs further work to solidify the elevations and have a more residential character as it is exposed to Broadway and its surroundings where it shares street frontage with historic single family homes. While I appreciate the ARB's conditions that the project revise its elevations, I believe that this project is important enough that before City Council action, this project needs further work to fit into the context on this site to better address the building's character adjacent to the residential historic district. And the reason I'm so concerned about this was this property actually asked to be excluded from the historic district. There was a lot of litigation that occurred. And the reason I, that I felt it was okay to have it removed from the historic district, even though it was in the historic district, was our downtown Orlando plan for Lake Yola Heights, which says all the redevelopment, particularly new construction, should be sensitive to the historic context of the surrounding neighborhoods and to the connectivity through the, throughout the area to ensure the sustainability of the downtown neighborhood environment. So um, I think we've got some work to do on that particular project, and uh, I just wanted that read into the record today. I have a couple of other things. Um, on item C15 today, the business assistance food car lot. I love this idea. It's very innovative and cool and part of the new business economy. I'm delighted to see that we're having great new projects come into District 4. And um, we have an item on new business today on the preemption of firearms. And I would just like to say that um, this challenges the penalties related to firearms. And you know, one of the first things I did when I came back to City Hall after seeing 49 people murdered in our city and 50, 68 wounded, um, I was horrified by what happened. And for less than an $800 investment, someone could do that level of damage, millions of dollars of damage, destroy families, destroy lives. And I felt, felt something should be done. And the first thing I was told by our legal staff was, we cannot do anything to preempt firearms. And if we do, you could be jailed, fined, and removed from office. And I'm glad to see that we're taking this action today. I want to thank our legal team, Mayor Dar. I want to thank you for your leadership because um, we shouldn't have to live in fear in all communities because of firearm preemption. And something that I wanted to read from this today, it says, whereas the onerous pre preemption penalties strike at the core of the American system of democratic representation, they suppress the voice of the local electorate through intimidation of local elected officials. And it's bad enough we have to face firearms and death in our communities. We shouldn't have to face this onerous and, and horrible kind of, of, of uh, stopping democracy. It's just absurd. Um, anyone who's seen what, what we saw, Mayor Dyer and the rest of the city council saw on Orange Avenue, less than a mile and a half down the street, would understand how horrific this is. And I'm, we had some, um, marches here locally from people who wanted to ban f weapons of war from our streets. It didn't get as much attention as the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas kids, and I'm so sad that this had to happen to someone else. Um, I hated that we had the distinction of the largest mass shooting in American history, and I'm so sad that we have since been, um, that somebody else now carries that, but we have to do something. and. Thank you again for your leadership, and I'm hoping that the City Council will support this today because it's very, very important. Thank you, Mayor. You have a motion? Uh, we'll make a motion to accept these Second. consent agenda. <clears throat> motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Stewart, and we did, uh, without objection, defer the item that Commissioner Sheehan had referenced at our agenda review. Meeting all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 As opposed, motion carries. All right, without objection, we'll recess the City Council meeting. We'll convene the CRA meeting. First item is to accept meeting minutes from February 21st of the advisory board. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Stewart, second by Commissioner Sheehan. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Uh, actually, I'll give anybody that was just here for the consent agenda, and that includes you, Reagan, if you guys would like to time to escape. <laughs> okay. Okay, second item of business is approving the CRA minutes for March the 19th. 
Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Stewart. All in favor of the motion <coughs> indicate so by saying aye, aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carries. All right, now, Thomas, you're up for the next three, number three. All right, thank you and good afternoon, Mayor and Commissioners. <clears throat> Item number three is approving amoeba funding agreement and security agreement for New Blooms Incorporated. The Minority and Women Enterprise Business Assistance <clears throat> Program was approved by the CRA in August of 2006 in order to stimulate and encourage additional small business retention and creation in the amoeba target area, uh, which is Paramore. The program provides three-year three -year deferred loans uh, of up to $40,000 to qualify new and existing retail and service businesses for retention, relocation expenses, purchase of, of capital equipment, capital improvements, marketing, and other business-related expenses. New Blooms LLC is a floral and event design business uh, which was incorporated in Florida in May of 2017. The business is, uh, has two co-owners, Alicia and Latina Smith, who started the business in their home before moving to their present location, which is 595 West Church Street, uh, which is City View, uh, six months ago. In addition to the two co-owners, uh, there is one lead foro designer, and between the three ladies, uh, there is a combined 22 plus years of experience in the floral design business. New Blooms has requested Amoeba grant in the amount of $39,400 for capital equipment, capital improvements, renovation, expansion costs, as well as marketing assistance. The Amoeba advisory boards and the CRA advisory boards have it have recommended approval in their February and March meetings respectfully. And if there are no questions, then staff is requesting approval of the MEBA funding agreement and security agreement between the CRA and New Blooms LLC and authorization for the chairman and the executive director of the CRA to execute said agreements subject to the review and approval of the city attorney's office. Second. Motion by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Is there discussion among Commissioners, hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. All right, number four, Thomas. Thank you. Number four, item number four is approving CRA infield housing down payment assistance program. You recall that on June 5th of 2017, the CRA approved the design and construction of 10 or more single family homes um, in an effort to increase owner occupancy of single family homes in the Paramore area. To, to ensure the success of the project, the CRA uh, desires to provide down payments assistance. The amount of the assistance will be dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis and will be based on the actual need of the applicant. This amount will be determined by the CRA in, cons in consultation with the lender and based on the difference between the buyer's loan qualifying amount as determined by the lender and other down payment assistance closing costs and assistance fund and the appraised value. The CRA assistance will be no greater than the difference between the amount determined with the lender and appraised value of the property with a maximum funding of $100,000 per applicant. Applicants must meet various criteria of eligibility, including being a first-time home buyer or not having owned a home in the previous three years, unless you are a City of Orlando employee, a public safety employee, a health care professional, or a teacher or school administrator. It must also complete a HUD-approved first-time homebuyer education course and be able to obtain and qualify and obtain a fixed-rate first mortgage of at least $125,000 from a City of Orlando certified lender. Additional criteria include acceptable housing expense ratio of 38% or less, maximum debt-to-income ratio of 45%, and a minimum credit score of 640. Additionally, Applicants must maintain the home as the applicant's principal residence for a minimum of five years. If the home is rented or sold within that five-year period, the entire amount of assistance is due back to the CRA. In order to effectuate this, a recorded mortgage and note will be placed on the property for the five-year period. Finally, applicants must provide a minimum of $1,000 of household money toward the down payment and closing costs. If there are no questions at this point, staff is requesting approval of the CRA Infield Housing Down Payment Assistance Program for new construction homes that are part of the CRA's Infield Housing Initiative and authorization for the chair and executive director to execute all necessary program documents, including but not limited to notes and mortgages, all subject to review and approval of the city attorney's office. 
Is that approved? Second. <coughs> Motion by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Discussion, Commissioner Gray. Yes, Mayor, thank you. Thomas, question. Um, yes. Do we or can we as a CRA have the ability to buy back the mortgage in the event of default? That's kind of a two-part question. Yeah. Commissioner, we have not contemplated that. I have not discussed that with counsel. Okay. So I would have to say to you, I would have to refer to counsel um, to get the definitive answer to that question. I might suggest we look at that. Here's my concern with this item. You have a home that you're building for 200,000, rough numbers. Right. We've contributed the lot as the city. Usually that's 20%, but perhaps it's less. So let's keep the number simple at 10%. So you have a total home package of $220,000. If somebody can qualify for a $125,000 mortgage, the city, the taxpayers, are putting up almost $100,000 to effectuate the sale, by right. if, I, if I'm right, and by definition, right. 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 these are folks who, first time home buyers, limited credit score, all good, don't get me wrong, we should help, I'm here to help, but shouldn't we look at ability to protect our mortgage, because look, if they default, they can't pay us back, they can't pay the mortgage, they sure can't pay us back, but if we can step in, because we have the resources, to own the home, buy it back for the mortgage, and then resell it to somebody else. We can protect our investment. So it's a suggestion. That's one. If we can't do that or we don't want to do that, I would suggest that, again, it, I'm struggling with the notion that someone can buy a $220,000 home with only $1,000 at risk, which are closing costs. Again, don't get me wrong, we should absolutely help that's the government's role. But that's a big lift, I think we're asking for. So that's my point of uh, discussion for the, for the, for the council. Uh, Commissioner Hill. Thank you, Mayor. And I uh, would like for us to consider that. My biggest fear isn't the default of the loan. It is the predators coming <coughs> to take advantage of disadvantaged people because Paramore is now being revitalized and gentrification, we're trying to circumvent gentrification by offering disadvantaged folk a $100,000 down payment mm -hmm. and bring those back to Paramore after 16,000 have left. So I know that Legal and yourself are mm -hmm. looking into land trust. I think that is the major focus is protecting these homeowners from uh, 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 predators. And the reason $100,000 is, 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 is being given to these home buyers, and we have a Paramore Home Buyers Club that has been activated, that the board passed to hands of Central Florida. We gave $50,000 to, to prepare these homeowners to know uh, about home ownership, to qualify for a $125,000 loan so that uh, as we uh, build Paramore, that there are people, uh, as you said, disadvantaged folks are still there and not just the rich are moving to Paramore because they can afford to pay for a $200,000 or $300,000 loan. Right, right. Excuse me, sorry, to activate the microphone. Um, make some excellent points. I have no issues with that. Here, here's the, the way I look at it. There's two parts to servicing your debt. One is your desire, mm -hmm. and you're talking about the desire. I have no doubt that people that move there desire to do there and pay their mortgage. Got no issues. The other is their ability. If folks, we're in a great economy right now. Right now. We're lucky. That's good. It's not always going to be like this. And people, when you get in a recession, we've seen it 10 years ago, lose their jobs. And we were one of the major cities in the country that had a lot of foreclosures. So all I'm suggesting is if the home buyer can't put more up, maybe that's okay. I, I'm more of a 90-10, 95-5 split. But that notwithstanding, we ought to at least have the ability to buy back because the CRA has the funds to do it if we can legally do it. So that if somebody does lose their job and they knock on their door and say, city, I really want to pay my mortgage. But the mortgage company 
says if I don't pay, they're taking my house, our asset that we just put $100,000 in goes to the mortgage company. It doesn't come to us. And on top of that, there's not another resident we can put in there. We leave it to the mortgage company, and we know how mortgage companies do. They want to sell it as quick as they can and, and move on. And so I don't know that we're doing the neighborhood any benefit there. So I really suggest if we can, Thomas, to, to kind of push the pause button and see if we can do that, because we can protect our investment. Understood, if, if I may. Uh, sure. Just remind you of a few things or point out some things that perhaps we, we failed to uh, point out in the briefings. Uh, first, uh, you've, you've authorized 10 or more homes to be built. Three of those, those homes are actually under, under construction at this time and will be, will be completed within the next 60 days. So the immediate horizon or the immediate opportunity is three homes. Um, in, second, the reason we're doing this, Commissioner, of course, as you know, is that presently there is no market um, that's yielding or, or motivating private sector developers to design and construct for sale uh, single family homes in Paramore. It simply doesn't exist. And so you've allowed the CRA to step up and to attempt to be the catalyst uh, to stimulate that market and hopefully after we demonstrate that it can be done within some reasonable bounds, uh, the private sector will step in, see an opportunity to, to make a return on an investment and start to do what they do. Thirdly, I do want to point out that the minimum qualifications that we're talking about are simply minimum. Um, we, as, as the Commissioner is just pointing out, we've been working with the Pyramid Home Buyers Cl Club, we've been working with Hands Incorporated, who screens potential candidates, a candidate pool. And from talking to them, we're knowledgeable right now of an initial candidate pool of 11 buyers. Um, only four of those 11 buyers simply meet the minimum requirement. The other seven buyers exceed the minimum requirement and therefore qualify for a higher than $125,000 mortgage. mortgage. Um, and of course, that's just fine uh, with us. Some of these homes may sell at full market value, uh, appraised value. Uh, depending on the qualifications of the, buyer, qualifications of the buyer. So that's why we wanted to be able to consult with the, the loan, the, the, the lender, um, make sure their, their, um, uh, their criteria, their underwriting criteria is all met uh, satisfactorily to them. Uh, then it gives us an opportunity to step in, fill a gap, and move on. But again, three homes are, are being um, ready for, for sale now. They should be ready within the next 60 days, which is why I'm before you today. As I said earlier, we had not contemplated your suggestion. We're happy to, to go back and talk to council about uh, that situation. Um, um, and I would ask you to uh, allow us to do that, uh, but to go ahead and, 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 and approve the program moving forward. You have a, another item after this that just is only pertinent to these three homes. So it, it's kind of all we're dealing with right now is the first three. And if I might sure. add it in defense of, of the residents that have previously purchased homes there in Paramore through the CRA your last time, I guess it was about 10 to 12 years ago when you built homes, the majority of those people still residing there. So uh, there isn't a big foreclosure rate in Paramore because there was no homes being built, but those uh, 10 or so that was built, uh, they're still residents of Paramore. Right, right. Again, Mayor, I, 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 we're, I, we're happy to insert lean provisions in yeah. the grant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you're both right. You, yeah. you haven't disputed e yeah. either way. Yeah, and right. I happen to um, agree with Commissioner Gray Me that in the, sure. in the event that there's a foreclosure, we ought to have the ability to, to purchase. pay off the mortgage and take it back because otherwise we put a hundred and right. whatever in, in the lender's yeah. pocket yeah. Yeah. risk. So, man, if you would just. Yes. Uh, sure. Help us figure that out along the way to protect the city. I believe it's already taken care of, but we'll ensure we have the appropriate and language. Also, and okay, Commissioner Shea. Yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to add that we did have some situations where this happened with some of the habitat homes that predatory lenders came in, and people, you know, you, you've got people with high equity and low financial literacy that were being taken advantage of. So I think that's that's just part of it. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Gotcha. You good, Commissioner Gray? Yes, sir. Mayor. Commissioner Ortiz. You know you were not going to escape my speech about this. Okay. I will agree with this because it's, it's for the people. Of course, uh, taking consideration that those adjustments that Commissioner Gray was talking about, Commissioner, uh, are taking into consideration possibly uh, applying them as soon as possible. But on the other hand, I, let me talk about a subject that has been a, a subject I've been talking about for the past 10 years, and we still keep talking about it, and I have not seen it. CRA on Samurai. I see all these benefits, 
that this particular area is getting uh, to revitalize the area. And our Semarang Corridor, we have had to do it a cappella, let's put it that way. Uh, we had to, our efforts had had to be because of the community and we don't rip benefits like this. Yet the, the uh, CRA downtown uh, limits the investment to economic development but the money doesn't go to law enforcement and, and, and firefighters while the rest of the city have to put, put up the money for that. So I think what is good for the goose is good for the gander. And we should also consider the Samurai Quarter, which is, needs a lot of help still to be redeveloped, to, for all of us to reconsider the possibility of establishing a CRA also, to also reap the benefits, this kind of benefits in that particular area that so much needs it. Now more than ever that we have so many people coming from other countries and we have a huge housing crisis. So I think this is one of the, the uh, particular benefits that we may be able to address have we had the chance to establish a CRA. I know I'm not, I'm not gonna get into the details, there's other areas around the city that have CRAs that may not need them as much as we need them in the southeast. And I'm not talking about the downtown area, but anyhow, we um, I like for us to revisit the possibility of establishing a CRA so we also in the southeast have similar benefits. That's it. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Sheehan. I may. Um, you know, this, this is very frustrating. Every time we talk about CRA funding, everybody wants the money, but this is the thing. This is a geographic area that pays into that CRA. That's why it's being used in that area. So again, I added a neighborhood improvement district, you know, with, with Orlando Health and with businesses along South Orange. They pay into that fund. You can't just decide somebody else's, like, it's like saying someone else has a retirement fund and I get to take it. You have to get the support from the area to pay into a CRA. They also have a CRA in Millennia. They pay, a, 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 they pay extra millage in order to, to use those funds for special purposes. No, ma'am. No, ma I'm sorry, exactly I have to correct you. CRA, CRA does. doesn't pay extra millage. Yes, you're talking do. about they, the they DDB, pay. you're talking about a different. They pay, Commissioner, if I may finish, they pay an extra mill that we vote on it every year during the budget hearings. They pay an extra mill. If you don't understand, we'll be, I'll be glad to have staff talk to you about it. But they pay an extra mill of tax which goes to that specific area. Ma'am, the CRA is not established with an, uh, by adding a, a millage. The millage, uh, the CRA, you're talking about a different type of deal in downtown, but the CRA does not um, add an extra millage to this particular program. Okay, we are pretty far afield from <laughs> this particular issue, so. Why don't Commissioner Sheen and Ortiz notice a little lunch meeting? I think that would be great. Guys can get together and discuss that Absolutely. on your time. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Be glad to. Further discussion. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 As opposed, motion carries. Number five, Thomas. All right. Item number five is, op thank you. O item number five is authorizing CRA infield housing sales authorization. This, of course, uh, pertinent to the same uh, initiative that we've been talking about and pertinent to that initiative, your aware that an RFP was uh, for qualified design bill firms was issued back in March of 2017. Two firms were selected and approved and com construction commenced on the first phase of homes in January of this year. I told you a few minutes ago that those should be complete within the next uh, 60 days. Those are located on Short Avenue. Design, um, and we, we intend to sell the homes to qualified owner occupant purchases per the discussion we just had and all, with all transactions providing a minimum sales proceeds of of $125,000 or more per home, exclusive of, of, of closing costs to the CRA. Uh, staff is requesting here to authorize the executive director of the CRA to enter into contracts for the sale of those three homes constructed as part of the CRA Paramore Infield Housing Initiative, initiative to owner occupants as set forth above and execute closing and other documents necessary to effectuate such sales, including but not limited to, de to deeds, covenants, and restrictions, all subject to review and approval of the city attorney's office. Second. Motion by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 As opposed, motion carries. Further business to come before the CRA, Thomas? There's none, Mayor. Thank we you. We'll stand adjourned and we will reconvene the City Council meeting. That brings us to a new business item and um, 
As I mentioned earlier today, we have a resolution that would authorize the city to join a lawsuit that was filed by the city of Weston and a number of other cities uh, challenging the penalties that are imposed, that could be imposed on local, effect, local elected officials by Florida's firearms preemption statute. And in the first time in the history of the state of Florida, they enacted a law, they, they're well within their constitutional ability to preempt us in certain subject matters, but um, to provide penalties that include removal from office and civil fines of up to $5,000 for simply exercising your um, duty, your responsibility that was given to you by the uh, voters of our city is certainly, in my estimation, unconstitutional. Mann's here and she's going to give us an overview of the lawsuit and help us uh, understand our effort to promote, protect our local democracy. Mann. Thank you, Mayor. Adam, am I doing this right? Okay. You're Thank on. you. Yes, uh, as the mayor said, there, uh, there are actually two lawsuits presently pending in Florida. And the one that we are specifically looking at because of the nature of the allegations and the legal theories. But both lawsuits seek to do the same thing, which is point out what the mayor said. We certainly understand preemption. Everybody here on this dais and everybody in this building understands that when governments upstream from us with greater power and legal ability choose to act in certain areas, we may be prevented from doing so. But this law, and specifically it's, it's uh, Florida Statute 790.33, uh, says more than if we are wrong about preemption, uh, then the law that we pass is null and void. That's usually what happens. Our law just doesn't have efficacy. Here, as the mayor said, there is a long list of chilling, and they were intended to be chilling, penalties that affect not just the city of Orlando in its official role as the city and the local government, but also public officials. And those include $5,000, up to $5,000 fines for each of you individually, and the city is forbidden from paying that money. So that's a very serious hammer. Um, Yes. It also, we had some folks coming to say that they will, they will raise the money for you. It, there's, it's even, right. you, it says you can't even accept anyone yes. doing fundraising for you. It has to come from your personal right. funds. That's that would how, also be an election law violation. An election law violation, yeah, that's how, yeah. Also, each of you is subjected to the possibility of being removed from office. You're subjected to individual civil liability, individually, not just in your capacity as commissioners and as mayor. Uh, also, the statute says that you cannot rely on my advice or the advice of our outside lawyers or the lawyers in, in our offices. You can't say, well, the lawyers told me this worked and this makes sense. Uh, also, you can't use any other funds for defense. Mm -hmm. uh, and the city is additionally uh, subjected to uh, attorney's fees penalties and fines of up to $100,000. And the thing that makes this so very difficult is that the statute itself does not preempt everything. Small example with, of that would be zoning for where a firearms retailer might be. That's a local matter. Zoning is a local matter. But because this statute penalizes you individually for even thinking or trying to legislate in this area, including areas that the statute doesn't preempt. You're in the conundrum of being unable to do your jobs and facing severe and chilling penalties. And we believe, it is our recommendation uh, to the mayor from the city attorney's office, that that is unconstitutional. It acts as a, uh, uh, and uh, to have an effect on the First Amendment by both action and speech. And there are other legal theories as well. And so to participate in that lawsuit does not require this council's approval, but it's our recommendation to the mayor that it would be best to obtain this council's uh, approval to proceed uh, in this lawsuit. And mayor, that's my presentation. If you have any questions, 
uh, obviously. Mayor, if, 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 if I may, um, I would really like to make this motion on behalf of the 49 and 68 and thousands of people who are impacted by the Pulse tragedy. I'd just like to make a motion. Second. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Ings. If I could, sir. Yeah. Um, may I, if I read the uh, Kyle provided us a copy of the lawsuit that the other cities have, have filed. If I read the recitals right, it, it appears that, and help me here, that the original statute was adopted in 1987, amended in 2011. Is that correct? Well, that part of the Chapter 790 was originally enacted, but it did not have these penalties. When, and the, the question was, when did these come? The penalties were put into place in 2011. Okay. Uh, and in fact, this body amended some uh, uh, parts of our, uh, uh, our code, our so, ordinances. Okay, so if I'm correct, I'm looking for clarification. If, if we were offended, by these penalties, we've had the ability to act since 2011. Is that fair? Well, the only problem with that statement is being offended doesn't provide a legal theory upon which to oh. uh, proceed well, with litigation. I wish it did. All right, I'll ask it another way. I'll ask another way. Has the, has the Florida legislature done anything on this particular issue to change the penalty since 2011? The legislature hasn't, but legal theories have developed. Um, okay. So answering directly those crafty questions, yeah, we could have sued them any time in the last okay. seven years. Okay. If we could have thought of a reason. Good. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to just weigh in if I could, because are we in discussion? Yeah. Just, yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Let me just mention sure. one other thing. We did, I can't remember if you were, were you here, Danny? Came in t June of 12. So that was 11. So I guess we purged. We had got some gun restrictions on the books things like can't carry a gun into city hall right. you can't shoot a gun in city parks things of that nature that we ended up having to um vote to take off the books i guess we probably did it in 2011 or be subject to the um penalties that are are at issue right now got it okay so we complied okay and if I can be clear, I did fuss about it at the time. <laughs> I did. I mean, I did. I, you know, can, you can go back and I, I can pull that tape. No, no, like, no I, doubt. I was, I was very offended by right. that at the time, and I made it, you know, again, you don't know until you really have something horrible happen that you're going to need it. Right. And that's okay. what, it, yes. Mayor, can I weigh in, yeah, or are we absolutely. in discussion? I'll just get the ball started here and get the, get the discussion going. Look, um, it, it was a tragedy. We all know it. We've suffered one here, what they had down there. We got it, all right? Here's my big concern with this, is we've spent the last six months um, begging the state legislature to stay out of our business. They, we've said, home rule, leave us alone, we'll take care of local issues, you take care of state issues. And I'm sure we've done that with Washington as well. And rightfully so, uh, and I've been on board with that. Um, we don't control guns. I wish we did, but we don't. And so I say, number one, let's stay in our lane, right? As much as we hate it, uh, we start getting in Tallahassee's business. Here's my other concern. Long term, look, the legislature is going to meet again next year at this time. And when we buck them and say, you know, leave us alone, but we can jump into your business, then I think we better be prepared for the folks in Tallahassee to say, okay, if you want to play that game, we'll play it. And we just sat here, talked about a key issue for us in this city is the CRA. That is a huge funding source. We've got to protect that ability. And so I think, guys, as much as you hate this and you'd love to you know, grandstand and say, hey, we're on board other cities, we're going to fight the legislature, guys, we're not going to win this fight anyway. This, to me, is more uh, aesthetic, window dressing, grandstanding, whatever you want to call it. Uh, not that I disagree with it. I just think we're really, um, we're really asking for a fight with Tallahassee, and I don't think this is the issue to fight on. Um, let me just respond to that. Um, Commissioner Gray, we're, we're not actually, I wish we were taking on the merits on the actual gun issue, but this could, these penalties could have been on any of the preemptions. Go through and uh, the preemption on shopping carts or the preemptions on not being able to regulate plastic bags or anything. So if we don't take a stand on this, I think the legislature 
could at any point say, well, okay, we'll make sure that we really make them know that we intend what we say when we say you can't regulate plastic drinking straws. Yeah, and that's, if I could, and that's valid, sir, and I, I hear you, and I don't necessarily disagree, but here's the way I see this. When It's not unlike in a very simplistic state when your parents used to say, clean your room, or if they said, clean your room or else you're grounded for two weeks. You knew it had a little more priority. When your boss says, I need that report by the end of the week, means a different message when your boss says, get the report by the end of the week or you're fired. And so for the legislature to make this kind of threat of what they would do, I think they're clearly sending a message, hey guys, stay out of our business. We're, we're handling this. Whether we like it or not, the legislature, I think, has sent a clear message that they're going to, it's their business. So, uh, valid points, but I, I just think okay. the risk, uh, the return on this investment isn't a good one, in my view. Commissioner Ortiz. Thank you, Mayor. I will respectfully disagree because we're comparing apples and oranges. In this particular one that we are trying to stop the legislature from uh, preempting uh, is one that has to do with lives. The other ones may be economic resources or whatnot, but this is lives. We're talking about human beings. Somebody carrying a weapon in a place like this where we cannot control, all of a sudden he disagrees with one of us and he pulls that gun and starts shooting, what are we going to do? And these are the things that we should be able to enact at the city level. We're not talking about disrespect, much less violating the Second Amendment. I'm a pro-Second Amendment kind of guy, but, uh, but there are certain things that we have to caution our people. We have to safeguard our, our communities. And there's places, especially in our communities, we need, where we need certain kind of protection. And this being one of them. Schools being one of them. And I believe that in this particular aspect, when we look at it from the uh, holistic standpoint, I guess, uh, is something that it, it has a merit. We, we should tell the government, this is just a message telling the government, you know, it's fine for us to follow whatever rule you decide on in terms of weapons, but we have, if we have certain places that we have to ban from, from having weapons or whatnot, let us do that at our local level because we know our communities better than anybody else. We're not trying to disrespect anybody. And for them to tell us, no, you won't, otherwise we will take you out of office or you'll have certain kind of penalties in which you cannot use any kind of funds but your own to defend yourself is pretty harsh. That's my humble opinion about that. Mr. Stewart. Um, thank you. I, uh, when it comes to preemption, I, I, I look at this a little bit differently. Um, and I think probably the, the, the one thing that controls my thinking is a little bit what uh, May Ann said. And that is that, that um, there are some issues uh, in this particular matter that aren't clear. Uh, and so now the question could be that we could take an action in those items, especially like in zoning, uh, in which case then a, um, uh, uh, we could be at jeopardy uh, individually. Um, I'm always uncomfortable when the state comes back and comes after us individually when we take a role as a, as a member of this body. Um, so if I'm standing out on the street and I get arrested privately, then, that's, then I take that risk. But uh, when we sit together and make a decision here in terms of ordinance and they come after me individually, um, I think uh, it's sending a signal uh, that uh, they want to do something different. They're trying to create a different level of uh, intimidation. Um, I don't believe that's fair. Um, if the answer is they want to come after us as a city, uh, they want to sue us as a city, they want the city to take on that responsibility, look, I'm okay with that because that's the role that we play. Come after me individually. Um, uh, using uh, Commissioner Ortiz's idea, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. I would like to have the same rules applied against all the members of the State House and the State Senate. Um, uh, because uh, are, are you telling me that we can now go after for every law that's passed, uh, for every gun violation, for every shopping center violation, for every issue that goes on? You mean that we could sue the representative individually and they would have to take their own money to do it? Um, that would send a different signal about how ca careful they are with making laws. That's what the challenge I have here is. So while I understand your position, uh, Jim, I, I, I think this may be the hill that we want to die on, no offense, uh, because this is the one that says, what is our role as a city member of this city council? Not as our role as individual, but what's the role of a city council? And, uh, and in that, 
um, I think that um, it's, it's worth fighting for the lives that were lost here. It's worth fighting for those that were injured here. It's also worth fighting for what may happen sometime in the future. Uh, and, um, and so, Mayor, I, I'm, I'm honored to support this. Uh, it does not change um, any of the presumption. We, we're not suing the, the, the um, whether they can preempt. We're suing, I think, over the matter of the penalty that they've exercised. And I believe that's probably a fair way for us to approach this. And so I, I see that as an uh, important part of this, of this lawsuit. So thank you. Anybody else? Hearing any further discussion, hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Aye. OK, so it's a 6-1 vote. Um, May Ann, I noticed in the pleadings that it's generally been the name of the city and then the mayor, but some of them have commission members that joined as well. Do we need that? I would like my name on that, please. And you know, I was going to ask if we could actually do that. Okay, unless somebody doesn't want to be on there, anybody that voted in the affirmative will have listed as a party. Thank you, ma'am. And you, if anybody doesn't want to be, you can let man know after the meeting. And, and thank you, everyone. This means the world to me. Thank you. I'm sorry. I misunderstood what you were saying. I, mean, I said anybody that voted in the affirmative, their name will be listed on okay. the meeting. So it's City of Orlando. Got it. And we do things together. Win or lose, we're well, doing Do you want to be on there, too? Why wouldn't I? I mean, okay. we, All right, we took a vote and I lost, So, but I'm still part of the council. So. <laughs> All right, Commissioner Gray. Yeah. Way to go. Yeah, we still like you. <laughs> okay, then on the pleadings will be City Wrong. of Orlando and all seven okay. members of the board. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay, let's sell some property. All right. Let's move to hearings. Um, number one. So public hearing for the sale of a parcel of city owned land valued in excess of five hundred thousand dollars is required by Chapter 13, Section 7 of the City Charter. Notice of the hearing was published in the Cent Orlando Sentinel on April the 6th, 2018. An approval of this transaction will require a majority vote of all members of the City Council. Property is located in downtown Orlando within the Creative Village Development Site. The buyer, MCRT Investments LLC, is a third-party purchaser pursuant to the purchase option agreement between the city and Creative Village Development LLC. MCRT will form a single-purpose entity to act as the owner-developer of the multifamily residential housing project proposed for the site, and the city will deed the property to the single-purpose entity. The parcel is approximately 1.4 acres. The purchase price is $5.5 million. The estimated fair market value of the property is $5.5 million. And at this time, we will, is there anyone from the public that would like to testify on this matter? Do we have any cards, Madam Clerk? No. No cards. Okay. Then do we have a motion for approval? Motion to approve. Second. Was that Commissioner Rings? No, that was Commissioner Hill. Commissioner Hill. <laughs> Commissioner Hill, uh, motion by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Okay, and this goes pursuant to the formula that we adopted whatever year we entered into the agreement with the uh, Created Development LLC, and we're starting to make our money back. How about that? All right, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And so the motion carries. Big smiles out there. <laughs> okay, let's go to hearings, ordinances, second reading, number one. Ordinance 2018-17, an ordinance of the City of Orlando, Florida, amending the Plan Development Zoning District regulations for the Lake Nona Plan Development, generally located north of the Orange Osceola County line, south of Dowden Road, east of Boggy Creek Road, and west of Narcoosie Road, and comprised of 6,969 acres, more or less, amending the Plan Development District's development standards and conditions of development, directing amendment of the official zoning map series, providing for severability, correction of Scrivener's errors, permit disclaimer, and effective date. Move to adopt. Second. Motion by Commissioner Gray, second by Commissioner Ortiz. Is there anyone from the public that would like to testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Two, Madam Clerk. Ordinance 2018-18, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, vacating, closing, and abandoning a 14-foot alley on the north side of Agnes Street between Delaney Avenue and Lake Avenue and comprised of 0 .07 acres of land, more or less, providing for the execution of affecting documents, severability, correction of Scrivener's errors, and effective date. 
So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Stewart. Is there anyone from the public that would like to test on this matter? Discussion among commissioners, hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Number three, Madam Clerk. Ordinance 2018-19, an ordinance of the City of Orlando granting Fomento de Construcciones y Contratas, Inc., FCC, SA, a non-exclusive franchise to provide roll-off container collection and disposal of solid waste within the City of Orlando, outlining franchisees' duties and providing the terms and conditions under which such franchise shall operate, providing for severability and an effective date. Second. Motion by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Stewart. Is there anyone from the public that would like to testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners hearing none. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Number four, Madam Clerk. Ordinance 2018-20, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, designating certain land generally located south of Concord Street, west of North Bumby Avenue, east of North Hillside Avenue, and north of Mount Vernon Street, and comprised of 0.42 acres of land, more or less, as a planned development district, providing a development plan and special land development regulations of the planned development district, providing for severability, correction of Scrivener's errors, permit disclaimer, and an effective date. So Second. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Ings. Is there anyone from the public that would like to testify on this matter? And I do have a number of appearance request cards, and we also had a young lady who spoke during um, the uh, prior one o'clock meeting on this matter as well. So when I call your name, come up, and if you would give your name and your address, and you'll have five minutes to address council. So Valerie Kennedy, and then Mahesh Daharaj. Close. <laughs> I just call him Richard. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, as a resident of Orlando all my life, I will have to say I appreciate what you do. This has really been an interesting meeting. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm They're also not glad. All this interesting. <laughs> And I'm glad sometimes in life you get a do-over, so right? My name is Valerie Kennedy, and I'm with Colonial Town Realty. And I have a property that we manage at 2211 East Concord. And Sherry Flasher has asked me to be here today because she is out of town. And she was uh, very concerned. She's owned that property for many years. And it, she's actually just a couple doors down from this uh, planned development um, on Bumby. And she's concerned mainly about parking. You've got, no, I, I would say she's not opposed to redevelopment because that area has needed to have something great happen to it for quite some time. Um, but the fact that there are 10 units there and only four guest parking spaces she takes great issue with because we all know that in families, you know, I mean, garages sometimes are used for other purposes. There's parties, uh, people have teenagers. Uh, for park, guest parking is just not enough. Also, um, there are some neighbors that signed a petition. Ryan Schofield at 2220 East Concord and Kristen Lapore at 2206 East Concord, John Carr and Patricia Edwards at 2014 Concord, and also Brenda Schofield was um, at the same residence, 2220. So mainly they're the residents just around this property. And that's, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Mahesh. Hingra? You know, before we, we get started, there was, uh, I'm, I, I want to bring something up. Could you pull your uh, right? Mic? You Can go. you hear me better now? Yes. Okay. Patty, what you said really gets me right to the heart. Guns, we really need to attend to that. And I'm, I, I, I can't understand why when most of you are against having, hand, particularly, machine braid, you know, machine guns and, 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 and repeat rifles. I mean, these are not, these are not hunting rifles. They will kill people. You know. We all know it. We all want to stop it. And I can't believe that your hands are totally tied. You know. And you'll get so much support from the community. 
and you know it. You know, all you have to do is you have the, you have to have the courage to stand up sometimes. And I really appreciate what you said that time. Now, my matter. Uh, 2016, I bought a piece of property on Bambi Avenue next to the church. Spent about a um, million three for it. Moved a 40-year-old business there. And it's reliant on visibility. It's a showroom. Sells to retail people. And uh, while I was overseas last year, I heard that the Planning Commission had approved uh, a, a building that was going to be, um, it, was a, it was a townhouse development, 45 feet high compared to my 20 feet high building. I was really concerned about visibility. I was concerned about my business, my investment. And Patty, I have to, I have to compliment. She, she moved forward on it. She understood my concerns. She arranged a mediation hearing between uh, a meeting with the, with the senior officials. And I met with the, with the developers. And, and they were also extremely kind. So we were able to come to a compromise, which really got rid of m my, my f f uh, primary concern, which was visibility. And they've, they've given me They've given me some compromise, which I accepted. And I'm grateful that Patty did that for me. But that doesn't eliminate my principal concern that a big development like that is going to impact me negatively. I just don't know how long. And after the meeting, I thanked uh, Patty uh, verbally, and I also sent her an email. And in that email, what I told her is what I meant. I don't know how much it will impact me, Patty. And I just wanted to voice that today. I'm not objecting to it. I, I'm, I'm concerned for myself only. So I just want to have it down on record. And all I'm going to request is that I'm going to leave a copy of the email and leave it on record. And that's it. OK? Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank and nice meeting the rest of you. <laughs> Where's his property? Where? Where's his property? Mm, I don't know. Yeah. Allison. S sir. Thank you. Sir, what's the address of your property? Uh, 538 North Bambi. Brian Ray? It's, it's the Murphy bed right. facility. It's okay. a lovely facility. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, um, thank you for the opportunity to speak, but I'm going to pass on it at this moment in time. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Dean, could, do you have anything to add here? Yes, good afternoon, Mayor, Commissioners. Um, this project is a PD. Uh, it's a tight site, uh, but it's been waiting for redevelopment for some time. We worked with the developer probably for over a year to come up with a site plan that worked. In the end, uh, the site plan was reworked yet again to address the concerns by, by Mahesh. And uh, the southernmost unit on the property was rotated and pushed back so that his property is very visible from Colonial Drive and um, also from, from Bumby. I would also add that it, the property meets code with regard to parking. The, uh, Development has 10 units. Each of the units will have two parking spaces in the garage, and there will also be two guest parking spaces for a total of 22 spaces, which is quite incredible given the size of the site. So we feel confident that there's enough parking on the site to address needs for the development and guests. Okay, thanks. Commissioner Sheehan, do you have any thoughts um, to offer? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, um, I like to try to get things worked out before it gets to this stage on second reading. I think we've addressed most of it, and uh, I'm hoping that, Richie, I'm hoping that you'll get to a point where you have a good neighbor and everything works out. So, um, you know, that's it's kind of where I'm at at this point. I really hope that we had, you know, there's, there's as we go through the process, you know, we have the Missile Planning Board, there's opportunities for appeal, there's two readings, and I appreciate you still might have some concerns, but, um, you know, there's, there's lots of opportunities to, to try to work things out, and I thought we had. 
Okay, so anyway, I'm just going to make a motion then to accept the PD. Didn't we already do that? No, we did. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, I did. Okay. Further discussion, aye. hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 As opposed, so the motion carries. Say. What you've done with that facility is, is beautiful. We, we welcome your retail facility. I mean, you took an eyesore, you know, in that area and really have made it a gem. So I thank you for, for, for your investment. Uh, I ordinarily don't do that, but you've been so nice. I'll let you have another minute, okay? You know, I'll tell you what. I've been in the city 40 years, and you, you guys are doing a great job. But, and when I reached the situation, sure, I, I should have objected on the, on the 16th, I didn't, and you, you still carried it forward. That's the way a community is supposed to be. We are allowed to make mistakes. And sure, I, I believe that, that this is probably something that the city wants. It's not what I want next to me. And at least it's, it's, it's my viewpoint. Now, you want to approve it, approve it. Only thing that I'm, suggest, uh, I'm suggesting is I'll have negative impact on it. And that's all I'm telling you, that I'll work with the community. If I have to, if I have to lose and be a martyr for it, just so that everyone does well, go for it. You know. when, you, when you want to push guns, I'll be right with you, you know, when you want to stop them. And honest to God, you know, but but we have to we have to work these things out, and that's about it. All right. All right. Thank Don't you so a much. Minute. Thanks for participating. Okay, number five. This is actually a third reading. Ordinance 2018-21, an ordinance of the City of Orlando, Florida, relating to disorderly conduct, amending Chapter 43, Section 43.06 of the Code of the City of Orlando, Florida, prohibiting true threats, providing for severability, providing for codification, correction of Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. Motion by Commissioner Ings, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Is there anyone from the public like testify on this? Luana Gelzer. Who's supposed to get the thing ready for me, sir? It's ready. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Luana Gelzer, 7674 St. Stephen's Court, Orlando, Florida. I'm not in opposition of this, but I have some concerns about protecting and serving all our communities and citizens equally. Um, after four years of attending the Citizen Police Review Board meetings and doing some additional research and serving on some other committees, it came to fruition that on Wednesday, April 4th, what I suspected was actually confirmed. And what some of us have suspected when we're talking about police brutality and complaints being filed against OPD, and you say, well, what do this have to do with it? It has a lot to do with it. Um, we were very concerned and <laughs> taken back that sometimes cases or complaints have not reached the Citizen Police Review Board because they go through other means, but more so, there was a process to try to internally um, take care of them. But our concern, especially in certain zip codes, especially 32805, we have a problem with OPD policing themselves. So I'm gonna look at the disorderly conduct um, proposal and you look at I and J and it's a key factor here and the key factor reads that ooh, the light is off in this part and I do the best that I can any person who shall but we're being ordered by law enforcement office 
to not congregate in public spaces. It's almost as if if they say we're doing something wrong and verbally ask us to move on, then if we do not comply, you could be arrested. Well, you guys just saw the video, and if you have not, a recent video on January 4th, two kids walking home from school, school and who was um, literally arrested because they expressed themselves based on what the officer said by shooting <clears throat> the middle finger. But the point is what happened afterwards. I'm concerned that the Orlando Police Department is given too much power to make decisions on such, on certain individuals. And what implied um, systematic racism that is here, we have a concern. And the reason why I'm concerned is, I hope you can see the use of force metrics. The Orlando Police Department is the only police department that I have determined within the state of Florida that only has four levels of use of force. You've changed your use of force metrics from a level, six levels to four. You actually can use a chemical agent at first contact based on your decision to do so. And other people have soft, you guys have two police officers. That's a major, five formal police officers? I'm seeing two on the, on the that's a concern for me. And the concern is, I don't want you to be able to make that determination. As a person who has um, not had her run-ins with the police other than expressing herself, but coming to a city council meeting and knowing my rights, but I almost was subject to an arrest and um, have two cases that um, I filed complaints on, but I guess they ended up in file 13. My concern is it was more important for Chief on Wednesday to try to collect, uh, correct me, but I'll say it again. You're number one in the country for excessive force. Now I know you're eliminating some cases. And it's in mappingpoliceviolence.com. You also thought it was okay to chastise me because I said I went to your barbecue and, and I was more concerned about community policing and other things. What I'm saying is we have to do a better job in protecting all the citizens and I'm afraid that even if you're making these changes to this, which I'm not against, will we all be police the same? And now we have proof that that's not going to happen. And if we are not gonna be allowed to file complaints, and if we, let's just check, if we file complaints, what happened to them afterwards? We have to change the climate in this community. And giving you more power to do certain things, to make that decision, and when you know it happens to people in certain zip codes and certain people of different hue, my concern is what are we gonna do from this point forward that we don't have another January 4th and other incidents that continue to happen with law enforcement with Orlando Police Department. Okay, so I'm not against it, Mayor, but okay. we gotta do better. Thank you. All right, anybody else like to testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. All right, number six, Madam Clerk. Ordinance 2018-23, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, amending the plan development zoning district regulations for approximately 4.88 acres of land generally located at the northwestern corner of Cole Avenue and West Gore Street, south of Ern Ernestine Street and east of Lucerne Terrace, providing an amended legal description, development plan, and special land development regulations of the plan development district, providing for severability, correction of scrivener's errors, permit disclaimer, and an effective date. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Ings. Is there anyone from the public that would like to testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. All right, let's try some ordinances on first reading number one. 
Ordinance 2018-24, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, annexing to the corporate limits of the city certain land generally located north of East Michigan Avenue, east of Mayor Street, south of East Crystal Lake Avenue, and west of South Brown Avenue, and comprised of 0.323 acres of land, more or less, and amending the city's boundary description, amending the city's adopted growth management plan to designate the property as residential low intensity of the city's official future land use maps, designating the property as the 1-2 family residential district with the traditional city overlay district, r 2 a slash t on the city's official zoning maps providing for amendment of the city's official future land use and zoning maps providing for severability correction of scrivener's errors permit disclaimer and effective date so moved second motion by commissioner sheehan second by commissioner hills anyone from the public that would like to test on this matter discussion among commissioners hearing none all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye aye, aye. those opposed motion carries that concludes the official agenda business of the orlando city council for today Madam Clerk, general appearance request? None. All right. We have one from the public that would like to address council. Then we will stand adjourned. It's pure!